guys, happy Mother's Day. I know we're a day early, but we're at Aaron's parents' house. We're getting ready to do a little Mother's Day gift project for Aaron's mom, Sue. And over the years of buying Mother's Day gifts and now being a mom myself, I've kind of found that the most well-received gift is the gift of service or time, like going and spending some time with your mom or going and working on a project for her that just really blesses her. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So this is the front of their house. We're gonna just work on their front flower beds. We're gonna pot up these pots right here. There's some boxwoods here in the pots. We'll trim up, we'll fill it with flowers. And then in the flower bed here, we actually planted these tulips a while ago when we got a new auger. We came down here and planted tulips for Sue. And um, so we're just planning on kind of filling up this area. I'm gonna work some compost into the soil, um, some beautiful plants, and then also in back here, mostly annuals, but some perennial too. I just wanna fill these beds full of color. And there's a lot of stuff already going on here. Like there's a hedge of lavender right up front that fills in beautifully, as does the gara. So there's three gara plants that get enormous. So I'm gonna to have to be really careful about what annual choice I plant around them, um, just because I know that eventually this gara will be huge. And then right here we have the freedom to plant because there's just not a lot around it. Something a little bit taller, kind of by this really pretty pot right here. And the fun thing too about being down here is that's our old house. <laughs> that's my old garden, you guys. That's the red point maple we planted and the boxwood hedge and the ghost honeysuckle. Maybe we'll go talk to the owners and see if they'll let us kind of walk around a little bit because everything is huge. <laughs> like I planted a lot in that space. So anyway, what I'm planning on doing is we're just gonna throw some cameras up, we're gonna start working, um, and then we'll show you, uh, give you a tour in the end. Okay guys, so it's clearly a different day. It got so bright and hot out here toward the end of our project. We decided to come back the next morning to finish up and show you guys a tour through everything that we planted because it does look a little bit easier to see when there isn't harsh shadows all over the place. So I wanna give you a tour of this whole space and this should be a really fun one for us to come back throughout the season and show you how these annuals, which most of what I planted are annuals, uh, fill in. So first off, what I did was I trimmed up these little boxwood cones right here. This one trimmed up beautifully. That one has a little bit of um, area where the boxwood needs to fill and grow in a little bit and I've got several of those at my own house <laughs> that I'm just kind of like training a little bit and you know hoping that they fill in as we go but I think they look really good. And then I topped it off with a little bit of a spoma potting mix because the soil level had sunk a little bit from last year. Then I incorporated a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer. Then came in with a couple varieties of super bells. So we've got Superbell's Watermelon Punch, Superbell's Honeyberry, which is really interesting. Look at this one, there's pink with a yellow throat. 
And then we've got diamond snow euphorbia, which the diamond snows are the smallest of the three euphorbias. Um, and so it'll stay more compact, which is what I wanted. I didn't want something that would grow so big and encroach on this evergreen or really encroach on the uh, super bells as well. And all of these have similar needs in terms of light. This will get afternoon sun. They like full sun and they will also um, take a little bit of drier conditions, which uh, my mother-in-law Sue, she has really good luck doing things that don't need attention 100% of the time because they do a lot of camping during the season. And if they're able to go out this year and do that, I wanted to plant things that would survive and do really well and like not need 100% attention. The front flower bed right here, I just love it. We actually ended up, after we planted everything, we tore out the um, current drip system that was in there and we put a brand new grid in there just so everything had really good coverage. Right here, you know, I already pointed out the lavender hedge which is starting to fill in beautifully. And then there were the three garas, which the garas, they grow up about this big and they get really wispy. So there's still a lot of light that reaches the ground here. So I ended up kind of popping a couple of my super tunias, which is, this is the trailing rose veined. Oh, I love these. This is one of the varieties I put in our pots that you will probably see the video up here soon. I don't think that one's going out before this one. Um, but I use this in containers at our house and I just think they're beautiful and I think they're gonna be a really soft look right here. Then kind of did a little swoop of lemon coral and the water doesn't even, we didn't even put water out here because I think it gets enough um, overspray from the lawn sprinklers to keep that happy. What a great annual choice to put next to concrete areas because it can take so much sun, so little water really, um, just so little attention. I think it's gonna be really happy here. And then we've got the Pentas, this is the Sunstar Pink. We'll put the name on the screen if I got that wrong. <laughs> but I grew these in the ground last year and had such phenomenal luck. I didn't have as good a luck with them in my containers, but in the ground they did so great. And they just grew up like maybe this big, so I thought they would be a really cute one to kind of hug this little rock right here. And just a really interesting shaped flower. I think the common name is Egyptian star flower, if I'm not mistaken. And then as we move back this way, we've got three coleus. This is the Wicked Witch. These are new this year. I trialed them last year. I got a little bit of soil on them, but they are so beautiful. The dark color with the, mar the chartreuse margin. And these, you guys, they will get big. And I told, I told Sue, you're going to probably have to trim those a little bit because when they get full sun and the proper amount of water, they create stalks like this big and they'll get enormous. But I did uh, save a spot right here because uh, my father-in-law got her a bird bath that has like this solar fountain in it for Mother's Day. Uh, so that's going to end up going right there. So I left a little space for that. Another pentas right here. I kind of um, mirrored or repeated the pentas in a couple spots. One to hug this rock and then a little trio right over there. Then we've got three of the Play in the Blue Salvia, which you guys know, it's one of my fave annuals. I love that plant. Uh, they just do so well for us and they also get pretty big. So I wanted to put those back behind. I think those will actually get bigger than the coleus. We'll see what happens. This planter, um, Sue had already planted up. I trimmed up the boxwoods a little bit and the dianthus were already here. And then as we move back this way, you can see I, I repeated more lemon coral. This area is very deceiving. This is very early in the morning, so it's shaded, but in the afternoon, this area up to about right here gets sun. It just gets really strong sun. So I actually, I went home and I grabbed an autumn frost because I thought, oh, this will be so fun to have some sun loving stuff. And then I get to put a hosta right next to it. I think that'll be a really fun, bright pop. And I'm going to finish the hedge of dianthus. I came up a little short, <laughs> um, but my, um, so Sue has already or ordered five Invincible Mauvette hydrangeas from my parents' garden center. She's waiting on them to come in. So I left that area. I have water there ready for them underneath the mulch, but there's gonna be a hedge of mini Mauvettes right here. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? And then we've got our Diantha. So this is Paint the Town Magenta. And I love the blue foliage. I think even if they're, when they're out of bloom, they'll still be a beautiful kind of grassy, icy blue texture right here that will really play off the color of the mini Mauvette blooms beautifully. So planted, new irrigation, got it mulched, got it all watered. Uh, I still need to do a little blowing off. I didn't finish that at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm seeing that we forgot a step, um, but I think it's just gonna be so fun. And you guys, it's not about, for me, it's not about planting a million things or planting 10 things or planting one thing. It's just about going and doing something nice for your mom 
whether it be planting a bunch or plant, giving her a beautiful plant in a pot or just going and hanging out with her or helping her clean out a flower bed or whatever the case may be, um, just serving your mom to bless her in some way. And that's what we wanted to do here today. Uh, and it's always fun to get out of your own space and do something somewhere else. Like I thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon yesterday, just working here and um, putting things in the ground. It really, it blesses me too, to do that. So anyway, I hope you guys are all having a great day. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there and we will see you in the next video, bye.